Welcome again to our series on growing up in faith, a journey through Hebrews 11. Last week was our third uh, message in the series, and we spoke about faith being our title deed to possess God's rest and peace. The week before, we focused on faith giving us entry into God's rest. And last week, we touched on once we enter God's rest, we have access to His peace. And we looked at the word substance in Hebrews 11.1, 1, and we looked a little bit further in there. But on the aspect of peace, we looked at sort of the opposite of peace. You know, when we're not at peace and we're not at rest, then we become anxious. And Paul advises us in Philippians 4.6 to be anxious for nothing. And that word anxiety we spoke about in the Greek speaks about a pulling in opposite directions and being divided and scattered into many parts. Because, you know, for those of us that have been in that unpleasant state of anxiety, we know that's what it is. There's no peace, there's no, there's no rest, there's no calm. But then, you know, Paul advises us in verse 7 of Philippians chapter 4 that through prayer and thanksgiving, we have access to God's peace that comes to guard our hearts and our minds. And that is so powerful because, you know, this peace stands guard and protects us from that. The word that we looked at was Irini, which speaks about bringing together, a joining and a tying and making us whole, which is the total opposite of what anxiety is. We went into this powerful Hebrew word, which was Shalom, which is used to describe the peace that comes upon us. And Shalom, as we said, was a soundness, a wholeness, bringing together and a destroying of chaos and a restoring of peace. And for this week, we want to we wanna look at it a bit further and, you know, we want to explore what hope is. And when we look at Hebrews 11, 1a, it says that, you know, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. And that's what we want to we unpack a bit further. Now, last week, we expanded on, on substance and we said that the Greek word for substance was hypostasis. And he spoke about a, a support, a steadfastness, a steadiness and assurance, but also an entitlement, a right and a claim, which is a guarantee. Now, that word hypostasis back in those days was a term that was used to denote a set of documents, which we call today a title deed. So faith, the writer of Hebrews is telling us, is our title deed to entering into God's promises, to God's rest, to God's peace that he gives us. And interestingly, as we expand a bit further on that word hypostasis, what of note is that the word faith, which is pistis, is actually a noun. Now, what's unique about a noun is that it, it emphasizes a settled reality of faith. Because, I mean, if I go back to my school days and particles of speech, a noun is something that, that you can touch. You know, it's, it's substance. And that's what the word pistis, which is the word for faith, is describing. That it emphasizes substance. And this substance, we know, is a gift of God. Nothing that we've created, but it's a gift of God to be possessed. And your title deed gives you that access because the other word for hypostasis is an assurance and a confidence of things hoped for. And that's what the writer of Hebrews is saying is that, you know, we need to know that it is not, you know, sometimes the word faith and faith is used to, you know, to be faith in faith. And it's not something to bring anything into existence. This faith that the Bible speaks of is something, something more than that. It is the power to trust God's promises in the Bible. That's, that's what the essence of, of biblical faith is. It's bringing that substance. It's bringing that hope that we're going to speak upon now and the power to trust God and his promises. Now, the reading that I have for today, other than Hebrews chapter 11, 
in verse 1, is taken also from the book of Hebrews, and it's Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. So Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 to 19, is our reading for today. And to help me with that, I have uh, my daughter Zipporah again. So Zipporah, if you can read for us our reading today, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. Thank you, Zipporah. Thus, God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Amen. Thank you for that, Zipporah. So that was the uh, New King James version of the Bible. And what I've done is that I've, 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 I've emphasized that, you know, when we look at the word hope in the, in the Greek, the word hope is el, el piso. And when the Bible speaks about a faith, is the substance of things hopeful that hope is alpizo and what is alpizo Al alpizo is an extension of faith so it is not hope that is isolated but true biblical hope hope as defined by the bible as per alpizo is an extension of faith and we need to know that christian hope is anchored in faith in god as you know, we read now, as Zipporah read, Hebrews uh, chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. It introduces the theme of, of hope being an anchor. And that's what the, the Greek alpizo is, 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 is giving us. It's giving us an impression that Christian hope is anchored in faith in God. And we've known through the series already that faith is solid. Faith comes from God. Faith is immovable. Faith is steadfast. Faith is, is substance. And hope is that confidence that we have. It's a sure expectation. So the hope that we have is not just some wishy-washy uh, you know, thoughts or, or beliefs that we have, but it's a sure expectation. And he also, Alpizo also speaks about actively waiting on God. So actively waiting on God, you know, waiting in this, con in this context of hope is not just sitting and doing nothing. But it's an expectation of hope that is sure, that is solid, based on what God has done for us. That Christ is alive, He's risen. You know, I remember doing a series on, on 1 Peter 1 3, and Peter introduces the theme of, of Christ being a living hope. That our hope is not dead, our hope is not something that's barren, but it's a living hope. We've just had a communion, and uh, Maddie introduced the theme that we have a living hope, we have a hope that is alive. And when we have communion and, and we, we think of the cross, we know that our God is alive. And this hope that we have is not dead because it's risen and it is there in Christ. Colossians 1.27 says that Christ in us, the hope of glory. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And we sang that beautiful song, which I'll talk a little bit more about because it's that hope, it's that fervent expectation. And as we're saying here, it's something sure, but it's an active waiting that we have. And, and taking it a bit further, we see that hope with a foundation. That's what Christian hope is, because the foundation is rooted in faith in God. And it's not wishful thinking, as I've said. So when we look at the verse, the verses that uh, we're focusing on, uh, today as part of our reading or linked into the uh, series of uh, growing up in faith a journey through hebrews chapter 11 what i've picked out from the new living translation is that in, in verse 17 it tells us that that you know be sure we can be sure this hope is sure at least our piece of hope this hope in in god is is a sure thing because it goes on to say that god will never change his mind. We know God. God is settled. God is solid. And that's where our faith is in God. It is, it is sure. It will never change. Because God has given his promise and his oath. 
So God has given us his promise and his oath because it is impossible for God to lie. So these are things that we need to resolve in our spirit to know that our hope is in a certain surety of God, that God will never lie. And in verse 18, he goes on to explain, therefore, we have not just the confidence because of all of this, because of who God is, God is immovable, God is steadfast, God never changes. Because of this, we have a great confidence, not just a confidence, but a great confidence to the hope that is before us. You know, as we'll expand on further in the series, all of these heroes of faith, you know, they didn't see, they didn't have the tangible evidence in front of them, but they believed and their faith made which was to come real. And that's what we have here, that our hope is anchored in the surety to know and to trust God through faith that what he has said, what is written will come to pass. And we believe that. And verse 19 is such a powerful encouragement because in the New Living Translation, it says that this hope is a strong and trustworthy. It is a strong and trustworthy. Wait for it. Anchor. For what? For our souls. It is an anchor for our souls. So this hope you know, we, when we look at that imagery, I mean, the people at that time, uh, they knew about fishing and they knew about going out on the sea. And they knew that if you went out to fish without an anchor, it was dangerous. Why? Simply because the anchor pulls you down. The anchor prevents drifting and provides stability for that ship, for that boat. So the anchor prevents you from drifting away and getting blown away by the tide and every wind. And you know, the Bible speaks about that. That we need to be firm in our faith, not just believing any wind of doctrine that comes around. So we need to test that through God's word. And if we anchored in faith, if we anchored in God, if we anchored in his word, we're going to have that stability. But you know what? The anchor is only effective if it is secured. And in the context of the boat and the ship, the anchor needs to be secured to the ship. So the imagery that we have here is that our hope is strong and trustworthy because it is the anchor for our souls. And you know, our mind is part of our soul. Our emotions is part of our soulish realm. And if our soul is, is, is anchored in, in faith, and if our soul is anchored in God, then we're not going to be moved around. And this is where we find that the ship, the imagery here is that, you know, that ship, that boat, is, is faith and the anchor is our hope. So if our hope is attached to faith, we're not going to be moved around. We're not going to be blown around by every wind of doctrine. We need to know that. And this is what we are hearing from the writer of Hebrews, that our hope needs to be anchored in faith in God, because that's the only solid substance that we have. We spoke about pistis being a noun. It is of substance. It is, an, it is an assurance. It is solid. And the anchor needs to be, our hope needs to be anchored in that faith, which is immovable and unchangeable. And that's such an assurance for us to know, because that is where our hope is. That our hope and our expectation is in the solid foundation of the word of God. Now, interestingly, this word hypostasis appears in two other places in, 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 and it's in the book of Hebrews. In uh, Hebrews chapter 1 uh, verse 3, it speaks about Jesus Christ being the substance of the Father. So again, a solid representation in essence, in the image of God the Father, something concrete, something solid. And in Hebrews 3 14, it, it speaks again of, an, of a guarantee and an assurance. And that's what we have. That faith is there to provide us the, the, the substance, the guarantee, and the assurance as the Word of God highlights to us. Because 
Faith provides the firm ground on which we stand. You know, we don't stand on, on thoughts, beliefs, on, on doctrines of man, of things in the world. But we stand on something firm and that's what the Holy Spirit is imploring us, is, 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 is asking us to realize that our faith is in nothing flimsy. Our faith is in nothing that is wishy-washy, but our faith is in the solid word of God. And faith believes God. And here's a worldly expression that you can take to the bank. You know, I, I lived in New Zealand for 14 years. And another common expression is that, you know, people will tell you, good as gold, mate, good as gold. And you can take it to the bank. But you know what? The word of God is good as gold. It is more than gold. You can take it to the bank. It is sure. It is firm. And it is absolutely solid. But in that, in that hope, it speaks about an active waiting. And, and this is what it is. That waiting for fulfillment of God's promise. That hope gives us that ability to wait patiently. Because why? Because in, in waiting patiently, you know, we don't get upset. We don't get rattled and we don't get worried. Why? Because it's firm. It's like that anchor. You know, it's firm. It's, it's holding us. Uh, I want to just speak out a, a Dutch Afrikaans word. It's holding us fuss. It's holding us tight. It's holding us strong. And that's what God wants us to know. That we can have our hope. We can have our expectation because it's linked to our faith in God that is immovable and does not get upset, does not get rattled, does not get worried. And yeah, you know, our humanity, our frailty comes in and, and sometimes we do get upset when we don't see what we are trusting God for. When we, we get rattled and we get worried. But at that time, we need to pray. We need to ask God, please increase my faith, oh God. Please strengthen my faith in you. That your hope becomes that anchor that is rooted in, in God. I mentioned that, you know, we sang a lovely song uh, for our communion earlier on uh, because it relates to the living hope, that our hope is alive. And, and we all know uh, this, this lovely song. Last week I, I ended with a song, a beautiful hymn, uh, It Is Well With My Soul. And, and, and this week, you know, there's a lovely song because when we sing and then we worship, when we praise God, His presence comes. And where his presence is, there is fullness of joy. And Nehemiah 8.10 says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's how we build ourselves up. And that's how we allow God uh, to come in and strengthen us. And, and this beautiful song that we sang uh, when, when, we, when we took the communion, you know, it reminds us of the living hope that 1 Peter 1.3 speaks about. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know he holds the future and life is worth the living because he lives. You know, Corrie ten Boom says that we may not know what the future holds, but we know him that holds the future. And that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The future is in him, the living hope. You know, these words were written by uh, Bill and Gloria Gaeta. And, you know, last week we spoke about uh, It is well with my soul and Isaiah 66, 12 being the words that uh, Horatio Spafford used to pen it. When peace like a river attended my soul. And it goes on to say that God comforts us with the comfort of a mother. And, and similarly, you know, when Gloria Gaeta was, uh, before she wrote this, this beautiful song, she was going through a tough time. She was pregnant with a third child and, and her husband Bill was not, was not well and, and there was a whole lot of anxiety and there was a whole lot of stress. And, and as a parent, you know, you face that sometimes when you're bringing children into the world, you know, you get consumed with worry and anxiety and, and you get rattled as, as, as I pointed out earlier. And then she says, when she began to pray and ask God for faith and, and for trust, she says she felt the comfort of a mother. She felt the comfort of, of, of God, as in Isaiah 66, 13, the comfort of a, of a mother. As a mother comforts her child, so does God comfort us. And, and she felt the peace as her faith increased. 
And as her faith was solidified, the peace of God came because she entered his rest and she began to pin these words. And, you know, during that time, uh, she began to realize that, you know, because he lives, she could face tomorrow. And, and she based it on these powerful words of Jesus in John 14, uh, verse 19. Because I live, you also will live. And I want to encourage you today, you know, with all the cares in the world and all the worries and all the concerns, for those of us that are in Christ, you know, we have this hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. For those of us that are in Christ, our hope is not in the things of the world. Our hope is solid. It is fixed. It's the anchor that holds us down, that we can be encouraged. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Maybe you're in a place right now, or you know of someone that is in turmoil, um, fraught with anxiety, doesn't have the zeal or the zest or the will to live. Share with them this hope that we have in Christ, that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. That's the living hope that we have. And we know that we know with certainty, because that's what hope is. It's a certainty. It's a sure foundation. It's a something we can take to the bank. It is as good as gold. Because I know, I know he holds a future. And life is worth the living. There's a lovely testimony that I've, that I've heard of someone that had been in at this place on the edge of life, not wanting to live further. And, and he heard these words. And life is worth the living because he lives. I want, to, I want to close on that because that word, you know, changed his life and it led him now to become a, a worship leader and, and a songwriter. And, and he goes on, you know, singing and encouraging others with the powerful testimony that came through these words. I want to close and, uh, and as I did last week, I close with a prayer, but, you know, in, in, in song and in worship. And I want to invite you, let's, let's prayerfully sing these words. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. So we thank you, Lord, for this time that we can be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the faith that you give to us. That we know, Lord, without a shadow of a doubt, without wavering, that it is a solid foundation that you've given us to trust you for what you've said, to trust you for your word. And that gives us the hope the positive, sure foundation, the expectation to know that because you live, we will live as well. So we thank you, Jesus, that because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, yes I know, he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he loves. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that life is worth the living. Holy Spirit, I ask that you impress upon our hearts to know that life is worth the living. Lord, I cancel every thoughts of self-harm, any thoughts of doubt, any thoughts of worry, in Jesus' name, Lord, that that will be replaced with the hope, the sure, solid expectancy and belief in you, Jesus, that you live and therefore we can live. So we bless you and we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I look forward to uh, seeing you again next week. Please keep the comments and the prayers uh, requests coming through. We'd love to pray for you and encourage you in your faith and do share this with others. God bless you.